rest of you. Abby, are you, please tell me this is the most like family friendly set you've ever done in your career. It pretty much is. Oh, thank fucking God. You might have a chance, girl. You might have a chance. All right, guys, give it up for uh, my accountant and my mentor and my favorite cartoon character of all time, Abby Denton. Please, Abby Denton. A glass. No, it's not broken. All right, everybody, calm down. <laughs> Are you okay? Yes. Remain calm. How are you doing? If I'm there, I'm not okay. What? I can never tell who's avoiding who. Damn. <laughs> Having friends is difficult. Having coffee is good. Is my camera on? Gab, yeah. do you want the set where you? Request drugs for people going on the internet attached to your name. Yeah. Oh, well. Come here, guys. Yeah, she's screwed. <laughs> so, uh, I promised her a family friendly set. <laughs> Who wants to talk to your old buddy Abby about the old Wolverino, huh? <laughs> Play some catch in the backyard with your ma and me? And the old bull burrito? What's your favorite labia? <laughs> Mine's the menorah. Because <laughs> it sounds like a holiday tradition. But uh, it's actually a part of the vulva. It's soft, it's sensitive, it comes in a variety of colors and flavors. <laughs> Truly, the labia minora is the thinking man's labia. <laughs> I, um, I only do the sitting on the chair backwards thing for that one bit because it puts me in mind of a creepy dad. <laughs> but uh, I can't at the moment figure out a dignified way to stand up from this position. <laughs> So, um, did you watch the game? <laughs> Why are you so desperate to get me off of this chair? I'm insulted! How dare you come to me at, at the one show a month I do? You come to me and you make demands. Who are you? Also, my notes are all over there. I don't even know what my jokes are. <laughs> I am Abby Denton. It is nice to meet you all. I am, as Gab uh, invected, the chairwoman. Sorry, I'm trying not to use sexist language anymore. The chairperson of the Itty Bitty Titty Committee. <laughs> it is very nice to meet all of you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to grad school in two months. I, I can't just call moving to LA, so I have to save up all my money for crack. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that, that's, that's weighing on me. I'm not getting as much practice with stand-up as I usually do. As you can probably tell, I don't, I'm out of shape. Your old paw's out of shape. You know, it's, I, I need a back rub. Could one, one of you come up here and give your old paw a back and talk about the old Paul Maria. Oh my gosh, my dad used to give one of my cousins back rubs while she was like watching TV. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, my dad's great. He's like the spinning image of uh, John Hannibal Smith from the A-Team. Uh, he's, he's a great dad, but then he does stuff like that. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Like, just, okay, wonderful. Sometimes I do sets and everyone's like, no one can hear you, so uh, it's good. I don't... I'm not very good at my... I think it would be an insult to you. Um, yeah, so I, you know, the, the most I can really justify going out to, to practice my sets is uh, to stand up competitions and stuff. I've been working on my skills for those. I'm still trying to figure out are you meant to cup the, the judges' balls or let them be free? I, thank you. You really are the cool one in the room. <laughs> If, if you were a Star Wars character, we'd call you Lando Carissian. <laughs> I figured, because you probably get Clarissa Explains It All a lot, I'd go with a slightly 
very slightly less successful media juggernaut than Clarissa Explains It All, which obviously defined the 90s. Um, Star Wars only brought the 90s out in a, in a horrible, depressing spiral of defeat. <laughs> I want to talk to you all about words tonight, because words are, you know, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. I left my bag up here and no one noticed. <laughs> I had an idea. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. My father was not very good at spelling growing up. And he struggled with addition for many years. <laughs> I'm proud of that one. <laughs> microphone, microphone. What do we think of the microphone? <laughs> do I have other jokes? Jokes are important. Words are important. That's the set. That's the bit. Words are important. They say the only gap between being mad and being eccentric. You look extremely overwhelmed. <laughs> Yeah, are you okay? Just usual. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Was that Carissa again? I am her. I am her. Oh, oh okay, 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 okay. Sorry. I don't, don't trust Lando over there. Sorry. <laughs> gotta, gotta fucking sell you up. Um, they, they say the only gap between being mad and being eccentric is having money. I think the only gap between being mad and being mad with power is having a death laser. <laughs> I think this is crucially important. Words matter to me. One day we're all going to realize that biscotti is just Italian for pastry that failed. <laughs> That's all it is, is shitty cake. Yeah. People tell me it's dehydrated cake. That means failed cake. <laughs> They say the point is it, it, it absorbs and, and complements the flavor of whatever you're drinking. I, there's a better way to get the flavor that you're drinking. Drink it. It's, it's more efficient, straight to the point. Straight to the point. I recommend it. You look like a biscotti eater, no offense. I, I'm really sorry. You sit in the front row at like a sparsely attended comedy show and people just zero in. I'm really sorry. You seem like a cool person. Oh, hey, how you been? Pretty okay. I might also know you and just, I'm terrible at recognizing. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Okay, I have a joke in honor of pride coming up about the importance of words. Why do we call them meteorologists and not weather daddies? I think that would be useful. Someone called my mom the other day, called her a MILF, and I laughed in his face. Dude should have been really embarrassed, because obviously the acronym should be MULT. MULT. I have a lot of friends at the intersection. I have a lot of friends at the intersection of, of the, the anarchist and vegan communities, and I'm not really sure why that is because my main hobbies are using money to buy steak. Uh, both of which are hobbies I recommend to you all. Um, but if, if any of you know anarcho-vegans, their, their main uh, cultural activity is uh, reiterating to everyone that they are anarcho-vegans. That's how they identify each other in the wild. Bumper stickers, owning a bicycle, you know, just, just these wingnut behaviors. Um, and so, you know, you go on Facebook, if you're friends with a lot of these people, and you just see a whole bunch of image macros, you know, reiterating these these identity points, and I, a friend of mine posted a, an image macro the other day, there was, there was a photo of a lady breastfeeding a goat with the caption, because drinking another animal's breast milk is just wrong. Grammatically, I'm opposed to that because uh, you don't have to specify that it's breast milk. If you're talking about another animal, there's only the one relevant kind. You're not going to say, don't drink another animal's soy milk, that shit's expensive. <laughs> You can just say, don't drink another animal's milk. That's fine. And second of all, we're in a recession. Who is, who is Facebook to tell me what industries I can and cannot participate in? <laughs> right. I'm making you not along with these disgusting jokes. <laughs> you are you are in the hot seat, my friend. <laughs> At the beginning of the set, that was me. But no, no. 
and now it's, now it's you. Do I have other jokes? Yeah. How come the turnpike attendant the other day um, at the toll booth, he, he called me babe. And it, it was kind of like a, like a throwback, and not only because there was a human attendant at a toll booth in the year 2015. Um, it, you know, it, it's just, just a little bit retro for my taste. And I, I feel like there's a double standard in place there, because it, it, when he called me babe, I was sort of discomforted and a little bit embarrassed. But if I were to call him, say, sugar dick, I presume he would only have been emboldened. And I feel that's unfair. <laughs> But I, I don't object too much to people to people saying you know rude things like that to me because I, I feel if I can give someone a, a sexual fantasy involving me, then that sin will remain with them, staining their soul indelibly for the rest of time. And so I win in a satanic kind of way. That's the first time I've gotten to do that one live. That got more of like a mom laugh, like a warm like, oh, I, I like where you're going. <laughs> I didn't really expect that. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. Catcalling is weird to me because it's like, how are you even dialing this phone? You are a cat. <laughs> I, have other oh. I, I don't mind catcalling when, when they put some effort into it. You know, if you just honk your horn at someone and freak them out while they're jogging, like, fuck you. Fuck you. But if, if like, little hearts float out of your head, or, like, your bursts out of your chest three feet, and you, like, howl like a Tex Avery wolf, and, like, your eyes bulge out, and your tongue, like, dangles along the floor, and then you, you hover after the object of your affection, like, then I can get behind that. Okay? It should be more like in the cartoons. It should be more like in the cartoons. Does anyone remember my grandma? <laughs> I have trouble. She's fading into the mists of it. That's not true. My grandma's still alive. Yes. I, I, she, she, my, my grandma's lovely. Very, very grouchy woman. Very angry woman. I, I think when you get older, the right to be angry is a great one. Uh, my, my grandma always used to, to she, was, she was very wise. She used to say, the hardest thing about being a horse thief is half of the commute. <laughs> That was what she said. She used to, oh wait, I, oh, I'm forgetting again. She used to say, everybody makes mistakes. And that's why God invented insurance fraud. Is that <laughs> Other jokes, other jokes. If you believe, she would say to me, anything is possible. Not believing in yourself. Don't be facile. Believe in the God of darkened skies, Baal. She used to sit me on her knee and say, boy! <laughs> My grandma was kind of an asshole. <laughs> She'd say, boy! <laughs> Never make friends with someone named Skippy, because no matter what you say to them, it'll sound like you're being sarcastic. <laughs> say, hello, Skippy. How you doing there, Skippy? Good to see you, Skippy. I'm glad you're alive, Skippy. <laughs> It doesn't work. Avoid them. Avoid them. Other jokes? No, no other jokes. Oh, oh, a special one. A special one. A newcomer to my act. She used to say, nothing tastes. <laughs> she used to say, nothing tastes like skinny feels. Nice. That's Skinny Fields, the jazz tromboner. Her, her ex-husband, whom she killed in a cannibalistic ritual in 1936. <sighs> what a class act. What a crass act. I like huffing typical male in annoyance. I feel like that sort of justifies sexism. Because it, it's, it's nice. If someone says something mean to you, you can just say typical male, and then you kind of win. You're the better person. It's gotten to where I've started to say it about things that it doesn't even apply to. This restaurant is closing down. A typical male. <laughs> There's drone warfare in the Middle East. Typical male. <laughs> My package didn't arrive. Typical male. <laughs> My, my partner actually recommended that one. 
I'm, I'm glad she, did. she she didn't want to come. She doesn't like uh, me. <laughs> I started I started dating a, a gender queer individual, which is cool because because you can you can try to figure out what words they they like having used to describe them. Uh, dashing is a good one for this specific. Per I don't know why I'm telling you this. This, this is meaningless to all of you unless you also end up dating my friend Jaden. <laughs> I'm selfish. I'd prefer it if you didn't. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. I took my, my, my crush out, out for drinks the other day. They're going through a breakout. And I, I felt like I should comfort them and maybe try to wheedle into their affections a little bit. And I realized in another timeline, I would probably be a war profiteer <laughs> if things were just a little bit different. I, I ordered, when we were at the restaurant, I ordered one of those three foot long novelty hoagies just to prove that I'm not afraid of commitment. <laughs> <laughs> or anything three feet long. <laughs> I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> Finally told my partner about my schoolgirl fantasy. Um, that's the one where you sit alone at lunch, stress over math, and feel ashamed of your body. <laughs> You know, the schoolgirl fantasy. Uh, I'll, uh, I think I'm going to let Gab come back up in a moment, but I, I want to tell you all, I'm leaving for film school, which is terrifying because I like having money. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping I'll be able to make it back with some of my winning ideas. I'm, I've got an Oscar winner in mind. It takes the controversial position that racism is bad. <laughs> tried to make a film like that because they keep trying. <laughs> and every time, everyone acts like it's some sort of new idea. Everyone's, it's groundbreaking. It's groundbreaking. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm writing a movie about a, a 19 year old boy who goes crazy and tries to kill all his friends because he hits puberty too late. It's called The Undescended. <laughs> <laughs> Film ideas. I'm setting a western back in the days when men were men and women more often than not were hooped. <laughs> Incidentally, do you think the reason horses haven't contributed more to the, the mathematical sciences is because uh, it's difficult to count? They, they only have the one hoof, and then if they try to use any more, they fall over. <laughs> It's, it's dangerous doing math as a horse. It's dangerous. I'm doing a film called Cup Reporter about a, a baby bear who goes to work at a, at a newspaper, but it's, uh, it's not a children's movie. It's an actual bear, and he can't talk or write or anything, but as he grows, he ends up eating all of his coworkers. <laughs> I'm doing a, a documentary about uh, corporate spying on uh, minimum wage food workers. It's called The Oban Panopticon. You illiterate garbage. <laughs> And I'm doing a documentary on anxiety uh, coping strategies that's full of jump scares. And uh, I'm, I'm going to call Gab back up, but I'd like to announce a video game I'm working on. It's called Trimidism. It's the only multiplayer game where you look forward to grinding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Abby. I forgot your chair and your coffee. You left a mess, Abby. That's not okay, Abby. We're all playing together, Abby. No, no, you take it. You take it, Abby. I don't want your coconut milk latte. Get out of here. But she did great. Give her a round of applause. I'm really gonna miss that little shit when she goes to film school. Little does she know, Josh and I are booking all these shows in LA and we plan on staying, staying with you. So, yeah, you have to let us. I've always been nice to you. You have to. You owe me, Abby. I